Welcome to video two of Be an Innovator with Dynamic Pages. If you're newly joining us, we are going step by step to build a smart dynamic record page. And so you can watch all of the videos, then share your progress on Twitter and get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so in video one, we talked about best practices for gathering requirements. In video two, we're gonna start talking about best practices for designing your pages. And so I'm super excited to chat and hear from architect evangelist Leanne Rimel and senior director of product management, Vin Adala, um, about best practices for designing optimized user-friendly record pages for our users. Let's hear from them. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for video two of Be An Innovator. My name is Leanne Reimel, I'm here with Vin Adala, and we're gonna to talk to you about best practices for building with dynamic forms and actions. So in the last video, you went through and you started thinking about requirements and what are those user needs that you're gonna be meeting with your pages. But before we start building our solution, it's important that we consider all the best practices, all the knowledge that we know from what other customers have built, from what our product team has built, from what UX has told us. And so the best ways that we can make really informed decisions about what we're building for our users when we build them these awesome dynamic pages. So I'm super excited that we're gonna be learning some of these best practices from Vin Adala, who is the product owner for Lightning App Builder and for Dynamic Forms and Actions. And Vin, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot, Leanne. I'm so excited to be here. Um, you know, I, I, I love helping and empowering our admins uh, to make these amazing pages. So thanks for having me. Well, we're super, super stoked to have you and we can't wait to see what all of our awesome admins build with dynamic pages. So let's go ahead and let's get started talking about dynamic pages and dynamic forms and how admins can think about it. So just to kick us off, what are some of those, you know, as admins, we want to make sure we're building things that are unique to our users and, and really meeting their needs in those requirements that we're filling out. But we also want to be operating with some best practices that are things that we've learned um, from, you know, how is this product best implemented, both from an administrative perspective and from an end user perspective. So when we think about our end user experience, um, what are some best practices as, of how we should think about organizing our pages? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually, you know, I've seen a lot of different pages, some that are very exemplary and some that are just getting started. Uh, and you know, I have a lot of lessons that I've learned from how our customers use our pages. And I think one of the first things to look at is uh, page templates. You know, what is the template that you're using uh, to back your Lightning pages? Our uh, Lightning App Builder, which is you know uh, uh, an amazing drag and drop tool, where you're able to build out pages literally just through drag and dropping, right? Clicks, not code. We build in a set of page templates, and it's important to look at those page templates and see. Uh, what works for you because a page template by default gives you a base level of organization. So for example, one of our uh, most common page template is uh, the header with two column page template. So you know you have a header at the top, you see a highlights panel, it's got information uh, for quick access, it's got actions that you use all the time, and then the two columns, you have your left column which is kind of your larger column where you're going to be housing the most common set of information, most common components, uh, most common use cases, and then you have a much smaller uh, section to the right side uh, where you may have secondary information that uh, you may not access as often. But thinking about these page templates and picking the right page template, I think, is one of the first steps that you need to do. And once you pick the page templates, um, you know, looking within each of those page uh, regions and seeing how you best can organize them. Like we ship with um, some standard components like tabs and accordions. And oftentimes, rather than just putting everything on the main page and having it load and cluttering your end users, you kind of want to look at that information and say, how best can I organize this? And with dynamic forms and actions, you know, before sections and fields were one gigantic block that you couldn't break up into sub tabs. But now with dynamic forms and actions, you can create a tab within it puts a set of components and a set of sections and fields specific to that purpose. So it's another great way of breaking up your uh, information. 
Tabs are one of my favorite things to use on Lightning App Builder pages. Um, and it's, I know when I build for my users, I'm often thinking, what are the things that they want to see right when they get to the page? Like, what are those things that, you know, if everyone wants to see? And maybe those are going in the compact layout and the highlights panel, like those kind of key fields that every single person that's going to be interacting with that page wants to see. Um, and maybe they're the above the fold items or, you know, maybe the components you decide to put above the fold or in those first, uh, you know, prioritized tabs. And then I always think, what are those things that people sometimes want to see? Like maybe they're going to double click um, into viewing a chart on a page, but maybe they don't need to see that chart every single time, whereas they very well may need to see like the account name every single time. Right. And so um, I always think about what are the things you always want to see versus the things that people want to see, you know, on a double click. Exactly. And one of the other uh, great advantages, and we can dig into this a little bit more, is also uh, when you have things uh, laid out that way, not only are you making that application approachable and, you know, more more efficient when you work with it, but you're also behind the scenes improving the performance of that page. You know, oftentimes, uh, you know, end users, there's a critical business ta task. They don't want to sit around waiting for a complicated page to load. So when you take sec uh, when you take things and put them off in sub tabs, uh, you don't actually, um, you know, the, the page load performance is not affected because mm -hmm. only what's visible is, uh, 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 you know, uh, factors into the page performance. What's behind the tabs hidden away doesn't affect page performance. And that's a really great point. I think as as admins, as people that are building these pages, it's building a, an experience that gives them all the information that they need when they need it, that provides kind of that guidance and guardrails so they're using it appropriately, but also, yeah, building really performant pages. Awesome. Um, and actually to continue on that, so we're thinking about how we're designing for desktop, regardless of what type of app we're building in, right? We're, we want to be cognizant of should these users be in a standard navigation lightning app? Should they be in a console lightning app? And, and what are the different page options available for us in both? But also we've got more and more mobile users and with mm -hmm. Salesforce mobile, right? We've got a whole different experience now. Um, how should our admins be thinking about, our builders be thinking about um, building these pages so they're really optimized for all these mobile users? So regardless of what device they're on. Yeah, that's a, a, a great question. Now, I think uh, as everybody's aware, we just recently uh, GA'd Lightning on mobile. So, uh, you know, Lightning is a first class citizen on mobile. And as a result, there are definitely some things to consider. So, for example, uh, you know, the, the, the first thing to consider is that often the task that a user does on desktop is not equivalent to the task that they do on the go. You don't need all the power. You don't need every single feature set. The first step to do is kind of consider what is the difference between what a user is doing, at, at, you know, on the desktop in a in an office environment, and what are the things that they're doing on the go. Oftentimes, when they're on the go, they need a subset of features. They need something that they can quickly react to rather than trying to sit and fill out a form and be really fully engaged. Um, so that's first thing is consider the use cases. Next thing is that understand that um, the power of phones. And, uh, you know, tablets is very different than what you see on your desktop. So, again, it doesn't make sense from that perspective to put everything on that layout. You know, uh, there's just not enough real estate. And the things that help you build specifically for the needs of your uh, users on mobile versus the desktop is we have uh, visibility features in App Builder. Well, you'll be able to say, you know, with using dynamic forms, hey, this section right here, you know, uh, I want it to show up only on mobile or this component that I've built here only show it up on mobile. Same thing with uh, when dynamic actions, when we're able to, um, uh, w you know, when you're able to play around with it, you'll be able to say this set of actions is only applicable on mobile while this set of actions is only applicable on desktop. So you'll be able to segregate uh, those sorts of things. And this goes back to, you know, really as an admin, when you're building these experiences, you are the user experience owner. Yeah, the great thing about App Builder is that um, we, Lightning App Builders, we have preview, which you will be able to go in and see what it looks like on desktop and what it looks like on your, uh, you know, your phone. So you'll be able to test that before, 
you I love the canvas preview. That's like one of my favorite. Yes. It's one of my favorite things to play with. For me, it always keeps me honest. I'm trimming down what I have available on mobile because when I switch it to the mobile view, I'm like, oh man, I've got a lot of components on here and they would have to scroll really far. So switching it to mobile preview keeps me honest as an admin of, okay, how do I really prioritize the right things for this mobile experience? Yeah, and when we're building uh, these technologies for mobile, we, we do as much as we can to try to do the heavy lifting. You know, like you said, it's a single column, you know, reflowing it to meet that co uh, column needs, right? We do that for you. Uh, what we do ask is, as you were saying, Leanne, is, you know, there is use case differences between desktop and mobile. Just really fully understand that and using the visibility mm -hmm. rules and things that we've put in and components optimized for mobile, just make that mobile experience nice and pleasant for the end user. So we've been talking about Lightning App Builder and templates and, and how to think about different pages for the different use cases um, that our users are experiencing, but there's also different types of pages that we can build. So should are there considerations we should be making? We've got you know, three main types of Lightning pages that we work with. We've got home pages, record pages, and app pages. Um, how should we as admins be thinking about different design considerations and best case or best practices between those kind of three main types of pages? Yeah, the most common one um, that we see is record pages and might be something that uh, people are already very familiar with it with. And record pages are often the pages that you use to, you know, uh, enter your record data, look at your record, create records, delete records, so on and so forth. Um, but there are these other sets of pages that we have, like you said, home page and app pages. And these are great because they tend to be landing pages uh, for your applications. They, uh, you know, as soon as you come in, I love to use these as a place for dashboards, right? If I am running a, um, a in a small sales uh, uh, company and I want to see what is my pipeline looking like, you know, what are my closed opportunities, you know, where are my um, sales agents, how, how far have they come with the quarterly goals, all these sorts of dashboards, they belong on these pages. Another thing like I love to have on these pages is sort of my, uh, you know, to-do list. Um, all these things are great for those pages. So I, th I think I, I view home page and app page as sort of a landing page. You know, when you come in, what information do you want to see at a glance mm -hmm. such that you can now take further action, which is where you end up into the record pages. Okay, so I feel like we've got some really great uh, tips here, some really great insights and best practices, and we're going to be ready to start designing and solutioning our pages. Thank you so much for joining us, Vin, and t for building an awesome product and for sharing best practices about that product so we can all build amazing user experiences with dynamic forms. Thanks for having me, Leanne. I appreciate it. Awesome. So now let's sketch out our page. So we're building a page for Sunshine Chocolate's care package. First, we selected our template. We picked header, subheader, right sidebar so that we could display tools that are useful and related on that right sidebar. I've added my highlights panel, and now I'm going to drag on my tab section. This helps me visualize what are the components I want to contain within, say, tab one. So I've got tab one with record detail and flow. Now I'm going to start adding to that right sidebar, which is where I'm adding related or supporting information like field section, maybe a rich text field component and another rich text field. Awesome. Now we've got our page sketched out and we're ready to start building. Can't wait to see all of your pages. Back to you, Rebecca. Awesome. Thank you, Leanne and Vin, for highlighting all of those amazing features and functionality in App Builder that we as admins can leverage. All right, to summarize, here are my main key takeaways from the video. One, Lightning App Builder has so many awesome features like console, like utility bar, templates. There's just a lot there, and the way we leverage it will help us really improve that user experience exponentially. Next, ensure you're designing for scalability. So we may have this one use case right now that we're building for, but how can we build so that we're flexible so that we can use this one page for multiple use cases in the future? Next, we want to design or sketch out our solution, our beautiful record page before we actually jump in and start building. So let's do that. 
And so we actually have a lot of great resources to help you get started with sketching out your own page. They are all in the trail mix, the Bean Innovator with Dynamic Pages trail mix. And then it's your turn. So definitely sketch out your design and then share it with us on Twitter using the hashtag being innovator in the hashtag sweepstakes. Um, all entries for video two must be completed and tweeted to us by 10 a.m. Pacific time, May 13th, 2020. Restrictions do apply, so see the rules for details. And then join us for video three, where we're gonna get hands-on in our orgs and start actually building out our page. Um, so to get ready for that step in our journey, you can sign up for a pre-release org that will allow you to have access to all of the cool features that we will be demoing in that video. All right, see you then. Bye. Awesome at me.